think there were more dogs than infants in this town. And they they bring dogs to every place. We we went to one and uh, they asked John to photograph this dog, which is Kiki. <laughs> and I, a, that's the coolest thing, which is a photo that appears within this issue, um, which I had to take a dog from another place. Do you need some assistance? Yeah. Did you do? Oh, of course, you, you've got a conversation with me and John. <laughs> Somewhere in there it says pigeons, I'm sure. So, yeah, this is the newest issue of CCD, line 37, and it's called Wait Until Dark. You have to wait. I'm turning it off. I'm turning it on. I'm just wiping up for the camera. Have you ever had a problem again? <laughs> um, so we were somewhere and I asked John on Yafto, and it's a photo of this within the issue, and it's called Wait Until Dark, line 2 to 7 to 6 CD. And I said, we need another dog picture from the back, and I had some picture at some other place. I was like, I this dog. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, this guy's a dog. I don't have any cat photos for things, but. Um, there, his photo was used inside this issue for something, which I can't find. Hey, and I got an AIDS watch section in the back because we said AIDS watch. It was one of the sections that we went out because, you know, you see so many things for drugs that come out of it, drug and the sun to sell everything. And I'm listening to one and I'm like, what is this for? It was for people as a um, vaccine of, of sorts to protect yourself from HIV. I'm like, what? Yes. Oh, it, and so I had to write about it because I used to we used to put things up on my as much. And what was it? Did I wrinkle it? I probably did. It's probably my fault. Take a for I'm like looking at a list. Take a for COPD. I've got some on my list, but but there is one in here. Um. Well, you'll have to read the article inside CC and D. I'm not going to read it to you. There's my little auditorial thing in the back of it. So, if you want to know about it, you have to find out the, uh, the A's Watch thing in the current issue of CC and D, which you can see online at scars.tv slash CCD current issue. Right here. Have it. It's not, it's a. Uh, I have to look. No, you're making me look for this thing. It's a. Uh, so the A's Watch is killed with the person's immune system. Uh, do anything with the person that I think the virus go away. Hopefully, do do do. The past 15 years, they did all this stuff. So it, they have things for erectile dysfunction. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> um, True Veda. T R U D A D A. But women weren't taking this pill, so I had a look. They didn't say much, but it sounded like a pill for people not infected with HIV or HIV to potentially help stop them from getting it. Yeah, that's true. Really nice. So. Look, look for more details from it in the magazine. So, I'm going to read this article to you. If you have problems with off, on, and switch, then press that same on button. They have to hit on first. And then switch from the camera in the corner. <laughs> you didn't switch from the corner. Well, I'm right where there was a camera. But, oh, I just got it. <laughs> I don't know where you was going. You turn it up. Want to see that again? Yeah, there you go. Okay. He's learning. <laughs> He's learning. So there's there are things for that because in the 90s we had a lot of articles phrase away this stuff in and because I had heard that news I had to put in this bulletin inside his Pardon me? Correct. 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 Anyway. But if you'd like to know about the latest info. It happens to be in an article that's in the current issue, which you can see online for free. Or you can go to free is always good. But if you'd like a copy of this phenomenal volume, um, you can also find it on Amazon. They're available in the United States, the UK, Europe, and even Japan. 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 And then somebody wrote me saying, Well, wait, I'm from Australia and I want to buy a copy. I'm like, I'm really sorry that. Um, <laughs> that Amazon's has not that invasive to get to Australia. <laughs> um, if you already have somebody order it and ship it to you, like, I know somebody in Canada, they can order it. Yay. So, anywho, I'm going to read some performance art poems, um, new and old. <laughs> I just see you working over there, it's a riot. What do you read? Just take out the button and then go, there you have it. Isn't that easy? 
So these are performance art poems from some new salon. The show is actually from September 23rd of this year, from the show called Life and Death and Everything Between. It was done in Chicago at the Gallery of Cabaret. So some of these are ones that have been performed in Texas and some people may have heard before. Uh, this first one is called Violations Tested. <laughs> was driving to meet someone who had so little time off for lunch, was running late, was still a few miles on a stretch of I-20 to their office. So although the sign said 30, I went 55 following a cop speeding down the street. So after about a mile, that cop turned on his lights and signaled me over, and he walked. I can just put it down in my <laughs> and, and he just walked over to my Saturn, asked me if I knew how fast I was going. And I replied, saying, I don't know. I was just following you, sir. And I waited. <laughs> if he wrote me a ticket, then there'd be a record that he was speeding while not in pursuit. If he wrote me a ticket, his faults would be found, and cops want to think they're invincible. So the cop finally said to me, after looking at me for more than a moment, watch what you're doing, and watch your speed in the future. That's all he said. And I nodded very subserviently. Yes, sir, and I, a little bit slower, <laughs> went on the way. <laughs> this one is an older piece that uh, people wrote responses to in Chicago. Mm -hmm. This one is uh, called I'm Thinking About Myself Too Much. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. that was cool. This is what the poem is called. Yeah. I'm Thinking About Myself Too Much. All my life has always been all about you. What do you need? What do you want? How can I help you? What can I do for you? And now for once I start to live and now you tell me that I'm thinking about myself too much. And I think back to all the time I've spent with you and all the care I've given you and now you tell me that I'm thinking about myself too much. And I've cooked for you and I've cleaned for you and I've made sure that everything in your world made sense and now you tell me that I'm thinking about myself too much. And the hell I can think is that they're only angry because I'm thinking about me at all. Uh, yeah. <laughs> very brief job, very brief job. He is a nice guy. He is, isn't he? It's, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. He's nice and too nice. He's just too nice. I mean, it's like the same guy who works with him. He's a sense of how shy he is. After, after he was in all this stuff, he went into martial arts and it was a matter of being able to come to absolute peace and stillness within yourself before you can do anything. So he has this great strength to be able to do these things, but he has, I think he was a very um, harsh and uh, reactionary person when he was young. And all of this, um, you know, I mean, not all of this karate training and martial arts training, and well, no, no, no. be able to calm down and center, which is why he always seems so calm. Yeah. It's just after years of doing this. So my readings are not that long. It's just that we talk. Yeah. <laughs> That's my problem. Um, but I will finish. Oh, I've got two here. Um, well, this one is one that I sh uh, that was shared with people in Chicago because um, my brother had passed away. And so, here you go. It's called Only Half the Story. He was a troubled man. He, he had a good life, but let demons in to do him in. In his struggles, he almost died a number of times. And even his family pushed him away and only heard the news of his death after he was already cremated. And it makes me wonder if our love for him ever completely went away. Because after all the mistakes were made, I want to believe that he's worth more than what his demons reduced him to. I, I want to remember 
that when I was working retail, he bought the biggest teddy bear through me when he had just found out that his wife was pregnant with their first child. <laughs> I suppose that was a fun way for me to get the news, too. I want to remember how he'd come inside after plowing too many streets to count that were filled with feet after feet of snow. That little icicle would hang off his mustache from his breath. I want to remember him picking me up from the airport when we decided to pay the airport parking machine with pennies, <laughs> dropping pointless pennies and then laughing at repurposing pennies that were only just wasting space in this truck's ashtray. I want to remember that a friend from his youth, who, who was shorter than me by the time I was 12, that his friend decided that my nickname was Shorty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want to believe how when I'd see him swim, he'd wear tiny speedos. Now, that might seem strange, but he was a college star. He got a college scholarship for this. He was a near Olympic diver, once in competition with medal winners like Greg Luganus. And he'd go to that diving bar, and suddenly this concrete construction company owner sprung with such skill as he'd flip through the air before making the tiniest tear and splash next to nothing through what that sheet of water that would shatter like glass in the sky if anyone else did the same dive other than him. You see, I want to remember these little slices of his life, these windows into his acts of kindness, how he was the kind of guy who would want to get the shirt off his back to a man in me. I want to remember this. Because I, I want to believe that he wasn't always lost. I, I want to believe that even though he erred, we shouldn't no longer condemn him, but condemn the thing that did this to him. So I try not to remember the demons, but remember the man inside. I want to believe, and that is why I must remember. The first one on this one is, is in homage to the current host at this open mic. He had a, Dave Getchen was his name, and he had a piece that he always did. It was called Remember the Crosses. Because, you know, in the Midwest, we're, you know, we're all, you know, are they sentimental or not? There are all of these crosses that are put in the roadsides for people. Who, and he, and it's, it's like his best known piece. It, but, but, yeah, well, sometimes you see crosses. You do. But, uh, but, he said, but, you know, but in the Midwest, we're less sentimental. And he has this whole thing about it. And so this was one of the things that was put in the show in honor, in homage to him. Short piece called Build Your Own Cross. Hmm. Why be a carpenter? Why build your own cross when Walmarts can do it for you? <laughs> Selling mass-produced two-foot-tall wooden crosses with glued plastic flowers to hammer into dirt at roadsides for accident victims? Why be a carpenter? Why build your own cross when you can have Walmart do it for you? <laughs> you know, always have to find a way, you know, hey, I'll just manage to do something so less work for people the better, right? The Walmart way?